Hello, Nerina. It was quite a while since we spoke to each other, and I want to give you a little bit of an update on what has happened in the last two and a half years since we met. As you know, I work at Karolinska Institute at Stockholm, Sweden. The group that I'm heading is called Therapeutic Immune Design. Therapeutic Immune Design means that we create proteins that are important and interesting for the particular diseases. Mainly I've been working with allergy, that is my basis. So in allergy we have cloned all relevant pet allergens. And from those we can improve diagnostics, but we can also make vaccines. Interestingly, we have basically made the vaccines for dog and cat allergy, and we hope that we will interest someone to take that further into clinical trials. The whole story with our group and what we do is actually to bring diagnosis and treatment to patients, and that's my passion. That's why I work every year, every day. Since we are a translational research group, therapeutic immune design, that means that we have the capacity to produce in a, a recombinant or biotechnological way all the proteins that we feel is needed for various diseases. So taking the same platform as we have used for allergy, we also enter into other areas uh, such as multiple sclerosis and uh, cancer. For the multiple sclerosis, we have found four new autoantigens that we are very excited about. And in the cancer case, we are really on the right track for a clinical trial in immune oncology. You may think, what is the common denominator between allergy, multiple sclerosis and cancer? And that is how the immune system process antigens, proteins, that is either foreign or our own body's proteins. In the case of multiple sclerosis, it is a matter that the body attacks its own proteins, it's called autoimmunity. And then the question is, how can we present the particular proteins that the body attack? and try to convince the body not to attack those proteins. But the common denominator here is the protein. In the case of allergy, it is a foreign protein that we react to in a very particular way, and then we want to make a new immune reaction that covers the old one and presses it down to create an immune system that is not dangerous and give allergy symptoms. And in the case of cancer, it is, it's called immune oncology now. And there we want to attack the cancer by using the foreign molecules that has been created through the mutations. So it all relates to how the immune system reacts to proteins. But the common denominator is actually the immune system and the protein expression in the immune system and how to handle that. So, Nerina, I'm so glad that I can live my dream, that I can take a protein and convert it in a way that we can cure different diseases. It's interesting with the cancer because if you go back three, four years ago, nobody spoke about how the immune system could influence the cancer. Now it is a super hot topic and everybody speaks about it. Even so that this year the Nobel Prize was awarded for checkpoint inhibitors, PD-1, PDL one CTLA-4, those breaks of the immune system that is hijacked by the cancer. The cancer is, is a devious and cunning enemy, and they try to avoid the reaction of the immune system. But it's all, it all depends on, for a successful treatment, that something called T-cells are activated, cells that try to attack cancer, and we try to activate in a cancer-specific way 
the T cells and give those back to patients to combat cancer. It is not a necessarily vaccination, but it is to grow T cells that is taken out from you uh, and grow them, expand them and give them back to you. So you will have an army of tumor specific T cells that will ultimately kill the tumor. So that is, we are one step ahead of the Nobel prizes as, as I see it. The challenge is that you have to bring this to the patient, to the clinic, is not only science, but it's also a matter of safety. And then you have to comply with regulatory authorities and regulatory prescriptions. You have to have ethical permission. You have to have your good manufacturing practice in place. Perhaps every third person will die of cancer. And in order for the health economics to manage this, the price of a treatment must come down to perhaps a fourth of what it costs today. And these treatments are extremely costly. So we are very much concerned that these kind of treatments must be available for everybody at an affordable level. The next step that we are looking for now is making the allergy vaccines validate for new autoantigens, which will be our vehicle to create a suppressive milieu or curing milieu for multiple sclerosis. And also, soon enough, go to clinical trials with patients with urinary bladder cancer that uh, will, after having gone through the ethical permissions and uh, the regulatory authorities' questions, be able to start within a year from now. So, in my opinion, the future of cancer therapy will, in five, ten years, possibly be that you take, you draw a sample of blood, you identify the circulating tumor DNA and identify the mutational profile and use that to stimulate the, the immune system to attack the tumor. So you necessarily do not even have to know what kind of tumor and even that you have a tumor. But already before that occur, you can take a blood sample and more or less identify that you have a tumor somewhere and you go and you treat it and you're, you're very happy afterwards not to have experienced the backsides, downsides of the tumor. So this was a little bit update. Let's keep in touch and talk to you soon again.